With just a laptop and an internet connection, you could design websites to launch new products, build an audience, and grow your business. It is by far the best investment that I've ever made, but when I started eight years ago, I made a lot of mistakes. The same mistakes I see 99% of beginners making, but they're probably not the ones you think. So this video is broken up into five sections to give you a web design roadmap to help you on your journey and avoid common pitfalls. Part one, mindset. Before you start to build websites, there are three mindsets that are essential if you wanna be a good web designer. The first is a service mindset. That means you have to act in service to the client, to the end user, and to the project itself. When I first started designing, I had this huge ego. I thought what I made looked good and I didn't care if it's what my client or end user really wanted. What I ended up realizing was that my designs actually weren't that good and I ended up hurting myself by being selfish. Now, does a service mindset mean that the client is always right? No. Sometimes you will have to push back in service of the larger project. But there is a world of difference between pushing back out of pride and pushing back because you're trying to make something truly great. This leads us into the second mindset, the sales mindset. This is the really big way that designers are different from developers and engineers. A lot of back-end engineers spend their entire careers without ever worrying about how much revenue they're directly responsible for. But as designers, sometimes we are solely judged by key performance indicators or KPIs like revenue, conversion rates, or time on site. Which is why as designers, it is critical that we understand the importance that sales has in a business. At the same time, it's important to cultivate an artistic mindset. An artist wants to appreciate, understand, and create beauty in the world. This artistry will balance out the sales mindset and give you the ability to create truly great works of art that also meet real business goals. In my opinion, web design is perfect because it balances the analytical mind with the creative mind, which allows you to get into this flow state where you feel like you're working at the absolute limit of your potential. Part two, getting started. Okay, but how do you actually get started? Well, when I first started designing, I hopped right into HTML and coded a really basic website. But this was really slow and frustrating and it didn't really make me a better designer. So if I was starting over, I would probably actually use a mock-up tool like Figma, where you can learn the principles of good design much faster and much easier than trying to develop websites right away. Even if you're gonna use no-code tools, which we'll talk about more in a second, I still think Figma is the way to go because it lets you start and more importantly, finish your first project very quickly. Plus, you're going to have to learn mock-up tools anyway to present work to your clients or to a boss without wasting hours developing a live site. So to get started, download Figma and watch a few tutorials, which I'll link in the description. Once you feel comfortable with the basics, start recreating websites as soon as possible. This is a great way to learn what you like, what other designers are doing right now, how to recreate certain effects or components that are trendy, and really quickly become an amazing designer even if you're brand new. If you want in-depth case studies of some of the best websites in the world, and you want the exact fonts, colors, and breakpoints they use, and you want a community of designers to get feedback from on your work, then check out designspo.co. It's free for 14 days, and after that, it's just $9 a month. Once you've recreated a few websites, the most important step is to post your work before you think it's ready. This may seem scary, but feedback is one of the most powerful ways to improve your designs. You don't need a portfolio to get started. You can post to Dribble, Behance, Twitter, or if you want in-depth feedback, you can post to Designspo. Part three, your first website. Once you feel a little bit more confident designing, it's time to build your first real live website. So I get two questions all the time when people are getting into web design, and that's what should my first project be and what tool should I use? Now, because you just spent all this time creating great designs, your first website should actually be a portfolio. Now, a lot of beginners, myself included, made the mistake of taking months to create a portfolio. But what works better is building a portfolio quickly and improving it every single week. Websites are usually pretty easy to retool, so give yourself a strict time frame of a week or less to build your first portfolio. That leads naturally into the second question. What should I use to make my first website? There's a big debate between code versus no code, and it really boils down to where you want your career to go. If you want to become a front end or full stack developer, you should learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But if your focus is more helping businesses, then no code is the right pick. That's because it's way easier to give a client a WordPress or Webflow site than it is to send them an HTML file and say good luck. 
luck. Think about it kind of like a skill tree in a video game. What you put points into is determined by your goals and what skills you want to max out. But the one thing you want to avoid is using templates. If you use templates, you'll never develop the skills necessary to really create great websites. In the beginning, you want to focus more on developing your skills than the final results. In other words, it's better to have a worse looking website that you made than a good looking one that someone else made. Part four, your first client. Now that you've got your portfolio set up, it's imperative that you try to build a website from start to finish for someone else as soon as possible. This is going to take you through the whole process of coming up with ideas, sketching, wireframing, designing, and ultimately developing. This first gig is really about learning how to communicate your ideas with another person. The experience of going back and forth via email, scheduling Zoom meetings, and explaining the difference between a mock-up and a live website is like getting your real-world MBA. This first website is going to teach you more about being a designer than any course possibly could. That's why I recommend starting as soon as you finish your portfolio and start with something small. I made the mistake of taking on a huge complex project when I first got started and it took me over six months to complete. And because I was a beginner, I couldn't charge a whole lot either. So I ended up making less than 15 cents per hour. So here are some small beginner friendly ideas for your first project. Design a digital resume. If you're in high school or college or know someone in high school or college, this is a must have. It instantly separates someone from other candidates and it's a really fun beginner project especially if you're working on it with a friend design local event pages this is a perfect beginner friendly project if there's a community event that you go to all the time and the only way they advertise it is with a Facebook post ask whoever runs it to let you build them a website a local business website this is the best beginner project you could possibly get but also probably the hardest most businesses probably won't trust you if you've never built a website for someone else before but if you know a business owner this can be an amazing opportunity these are going to be the big three, but you could also design portfolios for local artists or photographers, create landing pages for Facebook ads, design an e-commerce store, or anything else you can get your hands on. When it comes to charging, I recommend you only charge enough to cover hosting. Yes, you'll probably have to do your first project for free, but that project is going to teach you so much and will likely be a springboard for referrals and other opportunities. Part five, niching down. After you've got a few websites under your belt and your portfolio is starting to look a little nicer, you can consider niching down. You get a niche when you pair design with one or more skills, kind of like getting to a certain level in a video game and picking a custom class. There's a ton of different niches out there, but I'll give you the main ones so you have some idea about what you might want to specialize in. UI and UX. User interface and user experiences are what most designers specialize in if they want regular jobs. Right now, there are about 300,000 people working in UI, UX in the United States, and that number is probably going to grow over the next decade. If you work for a very large company, don't be surprised if you get given very specific projects like retooling the button on a component in an app. And if you work for a startup, you may be asked to basically create everything from scratch. Small business websites. This is the main path that freelancers take because it's not something that a business wants to hire full time for, but it's still something every business needs. There are about 120,000 freelance web designers and developers. However, there are tens of thousands of websites being created every day so there's probably enough work to go around. E-commerce. Building e-commerce websites and apps is a great opportunity if you want to build your own business. If an e-commerce store is doing a million dollars a month and you can take their average order value from $100 to $110, you just made them $1.2 million a year. But this definitely means you're going to have to have a super strong understanding of user behavior, conversion rates, positioning, and analytics. But depending on your ability, it also might be the best niche to get into because a tiny increase in conversion rates can be a huge increase in profit. Sales pages. Sales pages are usually pretty easy to design, but you need to be a master in human psychology and sales if you want to build a career here. That being said, it's a great niche if you love advertising. Software. Finally, software design and development is probably one of the best careers on this list. If you can write code and make software, you can get a great job at a huge company, work for a startup, or build your own business. Ultimately, whatever you decide to do, the key is to start today. Download Figma, go through the design spell case studies, recreate your favorite designs, build an amazing portfolio, and cultivate a skill that lasts a lifetime. Best of luck. And if you want some additional help on this journey, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, or you can send me an email, george at designspo.co. I read and open every single email and every single DM.